basic choir. So it's a solid that looks like this. It's the region underneath that parabolic sheet, uh, which has as its, if you could please be quiet, as its bounding surface at the front, it has that x equals 3 plane. And its bounding surface at the back, it has that um, y equals 2x plane. All right. And then, as I said, um, my sort of visual way of thinking about it is I assign, uh, I, I have a sort of, I assign the, the term height to one of the dimensions and base to one of the sides, which is just a sort of a rough and ready way of thinking about it. Um, so in this case, I made, let me draw a line in there. I made that trapezium in the xy plane the base, and then z is the height. So z goes from the base to the opposite side. So it goes from z equals 0 to the parabolic sheet. So z goes from z equals 0 to z equals 1 minus y squared. And then for x and y, I now look at my two-dimensional picture of the base, as it were. Okay, and it's that trapezium. I could do y first, but it makes more sense to do x first. Because to do y first, I'd have to do it in two integrals. And with x first, I only need to do it um, in one integral. So x goes from that oblique line to x equals 3 for values of y that go from 0 to 1. Okay, and then after that, you simply integrate and the easiest part of the problem. Next question. Why is it uh, am I sorry? Am I mixing something up here? X, Y, zero, one. So I'm obviously making a mistake, but I'm not seeing where. Or maybe not. Okay, so delta Y. Okay, so I've got y equals 2x because y equals 2x was a line that was given to me in the problem or it was a plane that was given to me in the problem. But because I'm using that uh, oblique line, that y equals 2x line, as uh, a limit of integration for x, I need to make x a subject. So it becomes x equals y over 2. Same line written with x a subject. I don't know whether I'm addressing your concern or not. Oh, oh, I see, 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 I see. I, I've got ones in two places, right? I knew I was making a mistake somewhere, and I just couldn't see where. That one is a one, though, isn't it? That one is a one, and that one would then be a half. Right, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, right. Thanks. It was obvious I was making a mistake somewhere, but I couldn't see where. Right. Because I've drawn it as a little 45 triangle. Because I'm drawing just a little rough diagram. But I think there was a question somewhere over there as well. Did I hear a, No, you were in fact pointing out the... Right, thank you, thank you. Very helpful class. Um, so that would just be 1 minus y squared when I've done the z. Okay, because it will just be z. We do a square bracket around it, go from 0 to 1 minus y And the 1 minus y squared just kind of hangs around. And I have x evaluated from y over 2 to 3. This will be 1 minus y squared times by 3 minus y over 2. Multiply that out. Answer is 15 over 8. Okay, it's the polynomial. Okay, so now, when I, when I just put dot, 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 I don't mean that if you're doing a similar problem, you should not continue. You should continue. It's just that we have precious time in this class, and I'm not going to waste that precious time integrating polynomials. Um, or at least I already have, but let's stop somewhere. Okay, so um, I, I know I risk being boring by repeating the same things over and over again, but it's the setup that's the hard part. You need to draw a good picture. If, if, if you don't think much of your drawing skills, well, it's got to be good enough that you know what's going on so that you can then kind of deconstruct that to be able to get your limits of integration. Because it's that picture that's going to give you your limits of integration. 
Okay, and at the risk of sounding a little bit mercenary here, in tests and exams, there are pretty much always marks assigned to the diagram. So even if the question doesn't ask for a diagram, draw a diagram. If you don't draw a diagram and you solve the problem absolutely perfectly, of course we're going to give you full marks. We're not going to penalize you for missing out on the diagram. But if you don't put a diagram and you mess up somewhere, well, you know, it might have been because you didn't have a diagram. So, so do do one. Okay. All right. Any questions about that or can I move on to the next? Okay, next one, 43. Uh, find the mass of the solid bounded by the planets x plus z equals 1, x minus z equals minus 1, and y equals root z if the density is given by 2y plus 5. And we're wanting mass. I know that mass is going to be the triple integral. Given the solid a name, I'll call it r. Um, density. And I can write that formula down without having to do any thinking. Mass is always uh, as many integral signs as you need. The integrand will be density, and then it'll be dA or dV or d whatever, depending on whether you're doing a flat region or whether you're doing a volume. In this case, we're doing volumes. Okay, triple integral, delta dV. Um, okay, so let's try and figure out what that thing looks like. Well, x plus z equals 1. I'm going to write that as z equals 1 minus x. I'm going to write that as z equals 1 plus x. And I'm going to write this y equals root z as z equals y squared. It's only half of z equals y squared, but it's, that's going to help me draw a picture. Okay, now this, this is a hard picture. I was chatting to some of you in the third period type yesterday about this. Um, I took this question from the textbook. When I was drawing up the handbook, I thought, okay, I need some more exercises here. So I went and had a look at the even-numbered problems in the textbook, and I thought, oh, this one looks nice. And then I sat down to draw the picture, and it, it took me a while. So I'm going to do this like zip, zip, like it's easy, but the first time I did it, I really struggled. Okay, so that z equals 1 minus x, and that z equals 1 plus x. Those are lines in the xz plane. But of course, there are also planes in 3D that we get if we take those lines and we pull them out of the x z plane. So I'm going to draw those two lines. I'm going to take this slowly because this is a hard picture. Okay, I'm going to draw my x going in that direction. You know that tends to be my habit when I'm... Because what I want to do is after I finish this 2D picture, I'm going to shift my picture onto my 3D diagram and I find that easier to do if my x is pointing this way. Okay, z equals 1 minus x, z equals 1 plus x. Those are two nice simple little straight lines. Both of them cut the z-axis at 1, but one of them has a positive slope and one of them has a negative slope, so they look like this. Okay, that should be symmetric. It doesn't look very symmetric, but it should be. That's 1, that's minus 1. That is the one with the uh, negative slope. I know that looks surprising. You're used to line sloping that way being the positive slope, but remember x is going the opposite direction to normal. And this one over here is my z equals 1 plus x. Am I right? When x is minus 1, then z is 0. When x is 1, then z is 0. Yes, that's right. Okay, that's going to be important later for my limits of integration. Yes. I beg your pardon? Um, is that... Rho. Um, now, I've used a delta. I try to avoid rho as my symbol for... Sorry about not plugging this in earlier. Gosh, this is probably going to make loud noises now. Um, I try to avoid using uh, the symbol rho for density when I do integration because in about, I don't know, in about a week's time, we're going to be doing a lot of variable changes and we're going to be doing cases where we shift from rectangular coordinates into spherical coordinates and then, of course, we use rho as one of the dimensions in our spherical coordinate system. So I try to avoid using rho 
as my identity symbol, but you're, as often it, it is. Um, um, the, the questions in the handbook are largely taken from old tuts and old exam papers, and so um, only some of them are my choice of symbols. A lot of them are other people's choice of symbols, and you will find rows being used for density, if that was the question you were asking. I'm using a delta there. Yeah, yeah, but that wasn't so much of a danger because the double integral you're never going to turn into spherical coordinates. Whereas a tropical, a tri tropical, a, <laughs> that's a quite a nice word actually. <laughs> Should mean something. A triple integral is a 3D thing and therefore could potentially be shifted into cylindrical or spherical coordinates. But you know, it's just a style thing. I was I was flipping through trying to find an example. You will find rho used as density in triple integrals. This particular one I use delta. Sometimes you'll find sigma. As well. Um, where were we? Right, trying to draw this thing. So, okay, so there's one little 2D picture. All right. Let me, <coughs> let me wow you with my drawing skills. Okay, all right. I'm going to need my x-axis to continue. Okay, that's me flipping my 2D picture into my 3D space. Okay, but now what does that other surface look like? Y equals root Z or Z equals Y squared? It is a parabola in the YZ plane. Well, it's only half a parabola. So, it's something that looks like... like this, okay, parabola, and if left to its own devices, it would like to be a parabolic sheet, doing this sort of thing. Oops, should be parallel to my x-axis, doing, doing that sort of thing. That's what it wants to be doing, it wants to be a parabolic sheet, but it's not being allowed to be, because think of those two lines on the xz plane, Think of them becoming planes and coming out from the XZ plane and slicing through the parabolic cylinder, parabolic trough. And what we end up with is, whoops, a daisy, didn't mean that to disappear. What we end up with is this. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a it's all that's left of that parabolic trough once those planes have sliced through. It's basically if you looked if you looked down the y axis, straight down the y axis at that shape, or you'd see a triangle. It looks like a triangle. So as I uh, as I was explaining to somebody in, in yesterday's third period touch. Imagine you had a parabolic gutter. Okay, so you've got this gutter. It looks like a parabola and cross-section. Okay, parabolic gutter. And you have a sticker. That's a triangle. It's a triangle made out of something sticky. And then you come along and then you stick that triangular sticker to the side of your parabolic trough. But, of course, it's bendy now because you've, 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 you've had to stick it to this bendy surface. That's what that is. That is that triangle bent against the surface of that parabolic trough. I beg your pardon? I should eat, I should eat Doritos more often. I try, uh, so, okay, triangle, I get that. Are they bendy? Are the, are the Doritos, are they bendy triangles? Okay, well, there you go, okay. Who like this? Yeah, ex yes, except it would, it's only on the one side because it's uh, y equals, so if it was z equals y squared, it would be the other side as well. But because it's y equals root z, it's just the one. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. So for those who couldn't see, she was and for the benefit of the audio, um, holding up a piece of paper. So take so take a triangle made out of paper and then and then put a bend in it. Make it bendy. 
and and that's what that is. Okay, but they're not really talking about a surface here. They're talking about a solid. Find the mass of the solid bounded by the one plane, the other plane, and this surface. So, in fact, it also has... So that plane and its twin on the other side are also sides of it. Um, and y equals 0 is the xz plane. So, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> it took me ages to draw the first time I drew it. Yes. So this over he so this over here is a flat plane. Okay, but I'll just write it here. Plane <laughs> z equals one minus x, and on the other side, I know. On the other side is the plane z equals one plus x, and then on this side, that's the curved surface of y equals root z. But I've drawn uh, straight lines parallel to the x-axis. So that's, so that's how I've shaded it. It's a triangular piece of gutter with a tent over it, yeah. Very odd shape. Most odd shape. Okay, all right. Phew. Now, after all that, we have to do the integral. So, we need to set up our limits of integration. So, we need to choose one of those sides of the solid as what I like to call the base. And then another, then the remaining dimension will give the height. So, I don't know about you, but I'm going to choose the xz, that xz triangle as the base, as it were. And so, x and z are going to go last. And there's my 2D picture at the top waiting for me. And y is going to go first. So y is behaving as the height. So let's have a look. My density is 2y plus 5. Y is going to go first. Y goes from the base to the opposite surface. So y is going from y equals 0 to that curvy surface, which is root z. And then next is our x and z. If z goes before x, then I'll have to do two integrals because z goes from bottom to top, but top is different depending on where you are because there's those two oblique lines, two slanty lines. So z could go first, but then I'm just I'm making trouble for myself. So x, in fact, should go first. x, remember, in, in my picture that I've drawn, x will go from right to left because you always go in the direction of increasing x. So I'm going from the 1 plus... Oh, I'm going to have to make x the subject, aren't I? Yes, I chose the triangle against the xz plane. This thing here. That's my so-called base. Okay, so if, if z is 1, then x is what? z minus x is z minus 1. And for this one, x is 1 minus z. Okay. Am I right? No, no, that's wrong. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. I'm confusing myself. X, Z minus 1. X, 1 minus Z. No, I'm right. Okay, so um, so Z, X is going to go from, in my picture, right to left, because you go in the direction of increasing X. So I'm going from the line Z minus 1 to the line 1 minus Z for values of Z that go from 0 to 1. Phew. There you go. Now you integrate. Now, it's entirely possible that you would have been able to set up that integral without drawing a picture. Um, but I certainly find it beneficial to draw the picture, even if it's a really scruffy picture, for me to at least get a sense of where the different things are and how they relate to one another. So, do they expect us to draw this? Yes, although that is a pretty hard one to ask you to draw. But in general, yes, we expect you to draw the volume. That's described to you. Okay. Okay, and then you integrate easy peasy lemon squeezy and so that'll be y squared plus 5y from 0 to root z. Notice that in this problem and in the previous problem it was not possible to integrate the uh, 
the three variables simultaneously because the limits of integration that you're introducing have the have variables in them, they're not just constants. So they, they're they more interrelated than in that problem we did yesterday where I did them all simultaneously. But if in doubt whether you can integrate all the variables simultaneously, if you're not sure, then don't do it. And what will that be? That will be z plus 5 root z minus 0 dx d z and that'll be 0 1 z plus 5 root z and then it'll just be x in square brackets going from the one thing to the other thing so it's 1 minus z subtract z minus 1 minus z minus z plus 1 so it's 2 minus 2 z is that right minus 2z, 1 plus 1, yes. And you multiply it out, and everybody's nodding off to sleep because integrating polynomials is... Well, actually, you're thinking, hooray, an integral I can solve. But, and then Tracy goes, oh, boring. And makes you sad again. But after a few steps, you end up getting 3. Okay, so you can leave... Uh, and it's... Uh, yeah. You might want to leave a couple of lines for multiplying out. And there's fractions. You can see they're going to be fractions. Once you integrate that, there's going to be some fractions. Um, okay, right. Why don't you give it a go? Number 44 and number 45. And I'll write the answers up so you can check yourself. Okay, so the shape for 44, you've got the sort of lens shape here on the XZ plane, okay? And if left to its own devices, it would form this sort of, sort of sausage with a lens shape cross section coming out of the XZ plane. But it's getting sliced by a, a, a plane. That's what you get if you take that line and pull it vertically out of the XZ plane. So what you actually end up with is um, you end up with something that looks Okay, I've, I've tried to draw, uh, I should actually exaggerate it further. Let me exaggerate it further. Um, I'm trying to draw this one a lot more slopey. Does it come across as a lot more slopey? So it's, it's that shape, it's like a... Yeah, sausage for lack of a better word, with a sort of lens shaped cross section. But on the left hand side, it's it's got a vertical face against the XZ plane, and on the right hand side, it's got a, a slopey face um, where it's basically being bounded by that oblique line, whatever it is, oblique plane, whatever it's called, x plus y equals two. So I would recommend, uh, it's not the only option, but I would recommend that that sort of lens shape over there be your so-called base. And then Y would be the variable that goes first. And Y would go from that base to the opposite side, which is that basically the plane, that little piece of plane of X plus Y equals 2. Okay, and then 45, the tricky thing in 45 is they don't give you the density, they just give you a description of the density. They say that the density is proportional to the square of the distance from the origin. So given a point x, y, z, if you have a point x, y, z, its distance from the origin is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So your density, which I'm going to call delta, is proportional to, but they give you the constant of proportionality, pi, times the square 
of that distance. So that's your density. You're, if, uh, if you just glance through, you'll see that there, there's, there's a few problems. Maybe not. All of this stuff is double surface and triple integrals. We haven't finished with them because we're going to come back to all three of them again in the context of variable changes and Jacobians. So at the moment, we, what we've done is we've taken, we've done them only in rectangular coordinates. But we're going to do some stuff on linear and nonlinear transformations and affine approximations, and then we're going to come back to double, triple, and surface integrals in the context of variable changes. So, if, so when I say you scan through and you'll see s problems of a certain type, it's not just here on these few pages, it's also later on again. Okay, all right, but there's one more exercise I want to do. Okay, I have five minutes in which to do it, and that's number 51. 51, the figure shows the region of integration for the integral such and such. Rewrite it as an equivalent integral in the five other orders. Okay, so I'm going to do this lickety split because we only have five minutes. We have a square over there. We have this thing over there. We can figure out what all the various functions are because we're given the limits of integration. Okay, so we're given i is the integral from 0 to 1. 0 to 1 minus x squared, 0 to 1 minus x, of some mystery function, they're not telling us what the integrand is, dy, dz, dx. So y went first, and y went from 0 to 1 minus x. So this must be the plane y equals 1 minus x. And then z, then z and x had a turn, and z went from 0 to 1 minus x squared. So this thing over here must be z equals 1 minus x squared for values of x that go from 0 to 1. So that's a 1, and that's a 1, and that's a 1, and everything's a 1. Cool. So we can deduce from those limits of integration what our various curves and surfaces are. Now we need to write it in the five other orders. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm afraid I am going to have to do this fairly fast. Some of these are, are easy, and some of them are trickier. Okay. I am first going to keep y as the one that's going first, but swap the x and the z. All right? So I'm still going to have... Sorry, I have a habit of writing my zeros so fast that they end up with tails, which I... Yeah, that's just part of what makes me special. There we go. So, there's, so y is going first. So y is still going from 0 to that plane 1 minus x. But I'm going to let x go before z. All right. So instead of z going in that, that little parabolic bit, if you just look at the bit on the xz plane, it's a sort of a little parabolic region. And instead of doing the z first, I'm doing the x first. So x will go from x equals 0 to x equals x squared root 1 minus z. And I don't need to worry about the plus minus because it's in the first quadrant. I know it's positive. For values of z that go from 0 to 1. Okay, that was not too hard. Okay, now I'm going to do the two that have z going first. So the zxy and the zyx. Integral sign. Let me put those zeros closer. So they're not taking up too much space. Integral sign, integral sign, integral sign, mystery integrand dz, dy, dx. Okay, all right. So z is going to go first. Z, z, z. Right. That means I'm making my x, that x, y triangle, my base. And z is going from the base to the top surface. So z is going from 0 to 1 minus x squared. Cool. Now with the y, x, I'm looking at the triangle in the base. If y goes first, then y is going from y equals 0 to the line 1 minus x for values of x that go from 0 to 1. Okay, because that yx is interested in that flat triangle that's on the xy plane. And if y goes first, then y goes from the x-axis to the, the, that oblique line of 1 minus x. Okay, how about still z first, but xy rather than yx. Okay, well z is still the same. And for the dx, dy, I'm still interested, that little flat triangle on the xy plane, but x is going first. So x is going from x equals 0 to that oblique line, which is 1 minus y. 
for values of y that go from 0 to 1. Okay, I know I did that fairly fast, but I hope that you didn't find it too tricky. Or at least that you have faith if, if you read through it again, it'll, it'll all fall into place. Books, now we're hitting the tricky ones. And they're the ones where x goes first. Because the problem here is that if x goes first, then it must mean that that square on the yz plane is my base. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Squares are nice. However, if x is going from the base to the opposite surface, which is the opposite surface? Is it that curvy par parabolic bit, or is it that slanty plane? Well, the answer is, it depends. It depends which bit of the base you're coming from. So, if, um, if you take that square on the yz plane. Okay, let me s actually say it differently. Think of the surface z equals 1 minus x squared. It's that parabolic top, okay? And the surface y equals 1 minus x. Those are two surfaces, and they're intersecting along this curve over here. Let me draw it in black. Okay, they're intersecting along that curve. That curve, if we project it onto the yz plane, looks like that. Oh, that looks straight. It's not supposed to look straight. Let me rub it out. Somebody groaned. Oh, dear. That's the projection of that black curve. And if x, if, if, <coughs> no, let me rephrase. If I consider that yz square as my base, and I head out from the base to the opposite surface, then if I'm heading out from that top sort of triangular bit, then the opposite surface will be the parabolic sheet. But if I am heading out from my base down towards that bottom triangle bit over there, then the surface that you'll up into as you head out from the yz plane will be that oblique plane. I've lost it. Uh, y equals 1 minus x. Um, okay, I realize we've gone over time. However, it does not make sense to continue this problem tomorrow because this is literally the last two lines of triple integrals. Okay, I'm going to continue writing the answer. If you have to rush to your next lecture, that's fine. I'm going to finish it, and I'll save it and put it up on Vuna. But if you need to run away, I understand. Um, so what we end up with here is we end up with a, 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 dub, a, a, a um, sum of triple integrals. Okay, I'm going to write this, but I understand if you need to run away. I'm going to run out of space. It doesn't matter. Mystery integrand. X going first. Um... Let's say we go dz, dy. Okay, so x will go from the base, which is x equals 0, to the plane, 1 minus y, for this part. Plus... So still dz, dy... X goes from 0 to the... Pa oh, no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Other way around, other way around, other way around. It's fine, I'll just shift that arrow. So now I have to say... I now have to describe Z and Y, and Z and Y are going to do different things for those two differently shaded regions. Okay, I'm just going to write this down. That's the YZ projection of C. I'm going to put a C into this picture. C, back down again. And it is...
still paying attention. Wow. Um, <laughs> okay, so what's happening there is you've got to find the equation of that dotted line. That dotted line is the YZ projection of the curve of intersection of those two surfaces. And you can find that by eliminating X. If you eliminate X from the two surfaces, you will end up with the YZ projection of the curve of intersection. And if you do that, you end up with that thing over there, which we're going to need Z to be the subject of in now. But in the next line I write, we're going to need Y to be the subject of. Okay, so for... Let me scroll a little so that it's closer to me at the bottom of the screen here. So for this part here, because we're interested in that, Z is going from dotted line to Z equals 1. But for this bit over here, Z is going from Z equals 0 up to dotted line. So that's what's happening with those limits of integration. Okay. Zip, zip. I need to finish the last one. I'm surprised the next class aren't invading. Okay. Same thing, only Y getting to go before Z.